In this video I'm gonna show you how you get your Freestyle Libre readings on your phone and alarms on your watch without any third-party devices. And I will share with you my favorite Freestyle Libre Link app functions that help me stay in the range for 99% of the time this week. So scan your sensors and let's go! Hey, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Tom. I've been type 1 diabetic for over 30 years and on this channel I help you navigate your diabetes journey. Guys, this week I paid extreme attention to my blood sugars. I wanted to see if I can manage to spend 100% of the time in range for the whole week. Unfortunately, on Friday I spiked a bit and I broke out of that ideal range for a couple hours. But anyway, I closed the week at 99% of the time in range. I just really wanted to share that achievement, but I guess let's get to the point of this video. One of the key reasons why I have been so successful this week is that I have been fully using all the features of the new updated LibreLink app. If you don't know, LibreLink is the app with this yellow logo and you can download it from both Apple Store and Google Play Store. To be able to use this app to read your Freestyle Libre sensor, you need a phone with NFC, but NFC is such a standard functionality of all phones today, so you most likely have it. When scrolling through this app a few weeks ago, preparing to make this video, I noticed that the app had improved quite a bit and it now has a few really nice functions. And I had not been using all these new functions because I simply didn't know about them. So even if you're like me and you have known this app for a while, watch this video to the end because you might learn some something new today. Just keep in mind I'm not a medical professional and this is no medical advice. Just a random diabetic guy sharing his own experience. But now we really need to get to the point of this video. So let's go through the LibreLink app step by step and I will show you how exactly I use each of the functionalities. First is Logbook. Logbook gives you a simple overview of all your scans of the sensor showing what your blood sugar value and trend was at the time of each scan. What is cool here is that you can add notes anytime you eat, take insulin or exercise. You can note down exactly how many carbs you ate and how many units of insulin you took. I realized that when I really push myself and take these notes I get really good insights that help me fine-tune my boluses and avoid blood sugar spikes after meal. I'll get to that in a minute. Now if you have Freestyle Libre 2, then your next feature is alarms. And this is such a powerful feature for blood glucose management. Now not everyone has alarms, so I'm not gonna cover them in detail here. But I have a separate video on this topic and I will link it here and in the show notes. But there is one more thing about alarms that I learned this week that I really want to share with you. If you have Apple Watch, then you probably know that you can't use the watch to scan the sensor. But if you you use Libre 2, you can get alarms on the Apple Watch. It's a push notification that your phone sends to your watch and it's really great. And guys, if you have Apple Watch or any other kind of smartwatch, make sure to activate this notification. If you're like me, then an alarm or notification on the phone will not always make you do something and react immediately, especially if you are busy. But for me, when I get the notification on my watch telling me that my blood sugar is running high, most of the cases I react right away and it really helped me manage my blood sugar and get more of that time in range. Next feature is daily patterns and this feature is especially powerful for setting up correct basal rates. You see my last week's readings were pretty flat, almost perfect, but sometimes I see the black bolt line that shows the blood sugar average spiking or dropping. And that usually indicates to me that my basal rate during that time of the day needs to be increased or decreased to eliminate that spike or drop. If you like me, you always aim for perfect flat blood sugar line and in this daily pattern screen you can really indicate those spots, those troublemakers, those interval of time when your blood sugar goes out of control most of the days and you can react to it specifically for that time. Usually for me it's that I slightly adjust, slightly fine tune my basal rate and that usually helps. Next is time in target and for me this is the most important indicator of how well my blood sugars are managed. Generally accepted recommendations recommendation here is that type 1 and type 2 diabetics should aim for at least 70% of time spent in the target range. And 70% of time in target range on average leads to HbA1c of 7%. And this A1C level significantly reduces risk of diabetes complications. But of course, the more time you spend in range, the better. 
So if you're like me and you already managed to be consistently at 70%, then up your goal to 80%. If you're at 80% consistently, up your goal to 90%. As I told you at the beginning, my goal for this week was extremely challenging, was 100%, and I didn't hit this goal. But I want to try again next week. Let's see if I can hit it. And guys, of course, I don't want to brag. This is not a competition. Everyone is at a different level, at a different stage of their diabetes. So wherever you are, try to challenge yourself and try to set that time in target range a little bit higher next time. And if you get there, you will see it will feel really good. You can thank me later. Next is low glucose events. And this again is a very important indicator. My goal is to eliminate most, if not all of the hypos. Now you see, I didn't have any hypos in the past 30 days, but I had quite a lot in the past 90 days. And I look at this screen from time to time because it helps me find the times of day when my blood sugar drops more often. You see, in the last 90 days, I had 10 low glucose events between midnight and 3 a.m. when I usually sleep. And this can be really dangerous. And this is telling me, hey, you you need to be really careful about this part of the night. Maybe you need to reduce your insulin dosage or maybe you just need to eat some extra carbs before you go to bed to avoid these hypos because this can be dangerous for you. Now these low glucose events in my case were caused by the fact that I had a faulty sensor that I was wearing and this sensor was showing a little bit lower blood sugar levels that I in fact had. So it's not that I had 10 hypos during the night in the past 90 days. I just want to use this to illustrate as an example what you might want to look into if you see quite a lot low glucose events and if you have the actual hypos. Next feature is average glucose. I don't really use this one that much because I usually don't see any big trends here. I feel like the daily pattern screen give me much more information. But I can imagine that the average glucose screen can be helpful for those of you who see some of the columns in this screen much higher than the other columns. And again, this screen might be telling you, hey, during this time of the day, you are usually going high you might want to do something about that next function is daily graph and here you really see how your blood sugars have been trending day by day you can scroll through the last 90 days and you not only see the blood sugar values but you can read all those notes that you added in the logbook before and it helps you understand how the meal you eat activity you do and insulin you take impact your blood sugar every time you do it. And I want to encourage you to pay attention to this because having all this information and learning from it will really take your diabetes management to the next level. Me personally, I have been studying these trends a lot lately and I have to say that I benefited from it a lot and I think it's one of the root causes of my time in target being so good this week. I was able to identify what's causing the spikes and drops in my blood sugars and I was able to reduce that or I was able to eliminate that. Next feature is estimated A1C, the most overrated feature of this app. Why? Because in my opinion, HbA1c is not the most important indicator of how well your blood sugar is managed. The most important indicator is time in target. Unfortunately, a lot of doctors and a lot of us are looking at HbA1c instead of time in target. And remember, I'm not a doctor, this is just my opinion. And I see so many Freestyle Libre users freaking out, why my HbA1c is 7 if the HbA1c in the app was showing 6.5? How is it possible? Guys, it's possible because the app is only using the interstitial fluid readings from the sensor to estimate the A1c. The actual A1c is taken in a laboratory from your blood, so it's totally normal that this might be slightly different. My actual A1c is usually right on the point or even a little bit lower than what the LibreLink app gives me. But you know what? I don't really care that much. For me, the main focus right now is really time and target. And after I eliminated most of my hypos, my A1c actually went up from 5.6% to 6.4%. But my time in range is now much better. I spent 99% of the time in a range this week. So I don't really care about my HbA1c being 6.4%. I really don't. And next feature I want to talk about is reminders. Now the first reminder that I think everyone should have on is the scan sensor reminder. This basically reminds you every time when you haven't scanned for the last 8 hours. 
hours. And this is really fantastic because once you start using this reminder, you will never lose any sensor data again. You will just make sure that you scan at least once in eight hours. Now, this is something I used to complain on this channel because without this reminder, I sometimes forgot to scan the sensor for more than eight hours and I lost the data. Now, with this reminder, it should not happen anymore. You can also set your own reminder for a specific date and time. And I want to show you how I use this one. And it's typically in situations when I get high alarm. So when I get high alarm, I typically treat that high, I take some insulin. But sometimes my treatment is not that successful and I stay high. And in this situation, Libre will not give me another alarm. And so whenever I go high and I have a suspicion that my treatment will not be 100% successful, I set a reminder in an hour and my phone will remind me to check again. And so in one hour, I can check again. And if I'm still high, I can take more insulin and treat that high a little bit more. And that way, I think it's extremely helpful because I don't stay high for very long. Guys, if you enjoyed this video, hit the like button and please write in the comments what your your favorite feature of the Freestyle Libre Link app is. And guys, you might have noticed that we just recently hit 15,000 subscribers. So I want to thank you so much for your support. It means a lot to me. I really appreciate it. Thank you. If you want to join this great community, then click subscribe, hit the bell so you don't miss future videos. And don't forget to check out the other video where I show you how I set up the alarms in the Freestyle Libre Link app. It's right here on the screen for you. Thanks a lot for watching and I will see you in the next video. Ciao.